Hey, what up YouTube? Uh, this is my three month in video now. Uh, that is owning the Rico GR3X for three months. As soon as I, I got this, uh, um, paid for it at the end of September, got it very early in October, about October the 1st or 2nd or something like that. So this is the X. Now if uh, you were to ask me now, which one would you keep if you had to get rid of one? I would probably say I would keep the original Rico GR3, this one. And that uh, there are two reasons for that. Uh, first off, both cameras have all the features of the GR and then the difference is just on the lens. Uh, if I did have to nitpick and say why would I keep the 28 over the X, uh, I would say uh, the 28 gets you in closer and tighter for macro shots. Uh, and we can do that now. Now, pressing this button here with the uh, the little flower icon will get you in macro mode. This is the uh, GR3, and we're going to get in as close as I can now to Captain Haddock. There, I'm focusing. I'm about 10 centimeters away right now. I'm going to get in closer. It's even recognizing a face now. Get in there. I'm now about six centimeters away. Uh, getting in closer again. I'm now too close. I'm pulling back about one centimeter. The oh, it's even focusing on his eye now with the with the latest firmware update. So we're going to take a shot of Captain Haddock now. Like that. Let's try that again. Focus right on his face. And you can see him there. I'll just go back to playback mode there. And you can see it's nice and sharp. It's blurred out the background. And uh, Captain Haddock's head is pretty big. Okay. Now if I just switch this one off for a second. Put it aside. We'll try this on the uh, GR3X now. Like this. Again. We're on macro mode. 1 20th of a second, f2.8, aperture priority, and uh, let's see how close I can get to Captain Haddock like this. Mm, too close, like this. Too close. So already I am almost double the distance away. Getting a little closer. There. I'm about. 12 13 centimeters away take a shot let's see if i can get in closer and get it to focus too close too close see it's recognizing the face but i'm just too close for the lens there and there where his chin is a bit forward. I'm just going to... There. There. It's not detecting his face as well. Right there. But... That's a pretty nice shot. So if I... If you look at the screen of that one there. We'll turn on this one. There you can see side by side. How much closer you can get with the uh, the 26 millimeter or 28 millimeter equivalent on the GR3, and there you have to get a bit further back. And I always thought, you know, sure I'm going to have to get a bit further back, but, but that 40 millimeter equivalent lens is going to fill up the frame a bit more. But it it just doesn't work like that. Okay. So another thing snap focus just leave that on there uh, snap focus is different on these two cameras because again uh, the lens is different now I'll just turn that back on now what we're going to do now get out of macro mode and uh, we're going to 
go into my top menu up here and I'm going to specifically request snap focus. What I want is uh, we'll compare them at 2.5 meters. Okay, so in the menu again, over to the snap menu, set it to 2.5 meters. And now you have to concentrate on this scale over here. Now the scale is going to show you uh, the yellow bar is telling you uh, what will be the cricket critical focal point of uh, a shot and the green bar behind that which you can hardly see right now is the uh, the depth of field in front of the critical focus and behind it in what is called acceptable focus now that won't be perfect it won't be really sharp uh, or as sharp as what you're actually focusing on uh, or whatever object is in that particular area but it will be acceptable okay so there is a difference between acceptable focus and uh, what is actually in focus but it's it's good enough so now we're on um, f2.8 and that's given us a really narrow shallow depth of field so we're going to bump this f stop up close down the aperture and you can see the green bar is expanding now so now we're on about somewhere between one meters and two at the start of the green bar and it's on five meters which in some situations will be fine for some people yeah um you might be doing street photography where you're okay with that that that's the amount of focus that you want you can keep taking it up a bit now we're in uh, f9 f10 f11 so now we're approaching one meter in front of the camera way out several meters almost approaching infinity i'm not sure how much it, how much it really is it might be 30 meters it might be 200 meters i don't know the the scale is too small to show you these details but you can see you really do have to close it down. It makes a huge jump from F10 to F11. Going from about five meters up to God knows what. Uh, when you've got the snap focus set at 2.5 meters and the lens uh, aperture closed down to an F11. Now that's on the GR3X. So that is that aperture is, is closed really uh quite far down now okay uh, the ISO has gone up to my upper limit of 3200 on this particular camera and the shutter speed is down to 1 15th of a second okay so I'm just going to switch that off now and we'll take a look at the 28 millimeter equivalent of the uh, the GR3 again we're going to set snap focus to 2.5 and focus to snap that's there uh, and now you can see here as a, it's a whole different ball game with this one if i start putting that up to f5 there we've already got about just over one meter to the five meters at f5 notice the iso doesn't need to come as high up yet uh, f5.6 we are approaching infinity from about one meter to infinity and f6.3 we hit infinity so if you want a really deep depth of field when you're out street shooting or uh, yeah whatever it is you're doing where you want snap focus you just want to be able to point and shoot touch the screen to shoot or uh, bang that uh, shutter down and by the way i tend to do this uh, select this one snap full press snap and then that means that when you've selected that one, just with a feather-like touch of the screen, it will take a shot in snap focus. And that's because I don't want to introduce any camera shake when I, uh, when I press the shutter button all the way down quickly and uh, avoid uh, the half press autofocus. So those are the two main differences that I can see with these cameras. This one will give you a little bit more uh, uh, bokeh, not much because they don't do bokeh very well, both of them. But this one gives you a little bit more 
uh, a little shallower depth of field for subject isolation and it does work you can actually see it but the the the, the huge selling point of the gr is uh, the zone focusing snap focusing technique and uh, the macro and the snap focus is slightly better on the original gr3 uh, the lenses are both just as sharp and they work really well so i can't fault them anywhere really if i had to keep one um it would be the the original gr3 um if you saw the other video I put out today uh, about the, uh, the the Ricoh company changing direction, maybe these are going to become scarce. Uh, that's why this will only be a theoretical question for me. Um, would I get rid of one over the other? I will definitely be keeping uh, both. And uh, if you have a Ricoh GR3, a GR2, a GR3X, a GR3, uh, a GR original without the Wi-Fi, I would suggest to you keep it because I think prices are going to go up on these things. If they stop producing these and start making some watered down version, uh, they're going to be more and more sought after. And... Um, three and a half months with the gr3x i've been loving it and uh i love shooting all sorts of all sorts of things indoors with it um when i'm using autofocus more than snap shooting and infinity focus i, I like this one if i'm doing landscapes macro street photography uh i prefer the uh, the gr3 uh it's just fantastic you think it's too wide but when you actually start shooting landscapes with this at uh, 28 millimeters equivalent and then crop that from uh, uh, the original size I think it's a, a the ratio is a 3-2 when you start cropping that to a 16-9 as well they, they just look fantastic and you do have cropping power don't let anyone tell you any different there. 24 megapixels is plenty of cropping power. They're great cameras. And uh, yeah, if you've got one, hang on to it now because it might be more and more difficult to get one in future. So adios, bye for now. And uh, that's just my verdict. I will definitely keep both. If I had to get rid of one, it would be the GR3X. Not that it's a bad camera. It's just that the lens on this one is a little more flexible if you are willing to crop. And with 24 megapixels, why not? It will give you a larger frame. We can do that in another um, another video sometime. Compare the, uh, the frame, uh, the framing on street photography and landscape and things like that on both cameras. Uh, so if anyone's interested in that, drop a comment and uh, we can certainly do that. Uh, but that's it for now. Bye.